Transporting RF signals through traditional coax cables or fiber cables can't be done without distance limitations, challenges, and costs. Replacing these traditional cables with a network connection can remove a lot of these restrictions and open up a world of possibilities. SpectralNet can make that happen. Today, I'm gonna to show you the basics of how SpectralNet works, some of its features and benefits, and take you on a walkthrough of the user interface. We start with two SpectralNet units. Now you can have multiple units in play if you want to receive RF signals from multiple locations or distribute your RF to a variety of locations. It all depends on your particular use case. One of the SpectralNet units will reside with your RF source, taking in the L-band spectrum you've tuned the unit to look at. So in this example, we'll use an antenna system as our RF source and its output will be fed directly to SpectralNet unit. Now the other SpectralNet unit will reside wherever your other RF device is located, in the building close by or in another country far away. In this example, we'll use a modem as our other RF source. And we'll have the RF coming out of that SpectralNet unit feeding into that modem. With this distance limitation removed, you no longer have to keep your RF devices close together. They can reside anywhere that's convenient and most cost-effective for your operation. Now that the spectral net units are connected to the RF devices, we can establish the connection between the spectral net units. All this requires is a network connection. In fact, for basic bench testing, you can connect the two units side by side with a simple ethernet cable. SpectralNet will take in the RF signals and convert them to 40, V to 49.2 packets that are completely independent of the transport layer of the network. So any standard public or private network with enough network bandwidth to handle the amount of data that will be transmitted between the units is all that's required. Once the Vita49 packets reach the destination spectral net unit, they're reconverted to RF and sent out to the connected device. One other thing to note, each spectral net unit is full duplex. That means you'll be able to transport, transmit and receive the maximum amount of RF spectrum for each unit in each direction simultaneously. Now let's talk about some of the benefits that SpectralNet offers. SpectralNet minimizes latency and provides time deterministic data transport. It eliminates distance constraints and it, it preserves frequency and timing characteristics of your spectrum. And it can be configured to minimize the impact of your network loading. And with the wideband unit, you get increased resilience with redundant power supplies, redundant WAN links, and up to seven to one failover to ensure system availability in the event of a local failure with the network connection, RF connection, or any component level failure. To meet varying customers' needs and budget requirements, we offer two different spectral nets. One is our narrow band unit for single carriers or small amounts of spectral transport. And the other unit, as I mentioned earlier, is our wide band unit. It's designed for transporting large amounts of spectrum and it can be scaled up to meet all of your spectral transport requirements. So taking a look at some of the high level specifications, let's start with the SpectralNet narrowband unit. Now this comes in two different form factors, our small form factor unit, which has an external power supply, or our one RU unit, which has a built-in power supply and fans and a, a touchscreen front panel interface. Now, both units have the same functionality inside, and their center frequency can be tuned from 50 megahertz to 2500 megahertz for both RF in and RF out. They can take in up to 54 megahertz of continuous spectrum and transport all of that spectrum. Now, it does come with a single channel, which means within that 54 megahertz, you can decide how much of that spectrum you want to actually transport thus minimizing the amount of data that will be required to go over your network. There's also a one-to-one -one automatic failover uh, capability with the narrowband spectral net. 
Now for the wideband spectral net, that comes in a 1RU chassis and the digitizer card can send, uh, focus its center frequency between 900 megahertz to 2450 megahertz, RF in and RF out. And it can digitize up to 500 megahertz of continuous spectrum. Now it comes with two channels. So within that 500 megahertz spectrum, you can decide up to two independent areas within that spectrum that you want to capture, digitize, and transport. The 1RU chassis can hold up to two independent 500 megahertz digitizer cards. And SpectralNet Wideband also has a seven to one failover capability, which means you can have one card designated as a failover card, and that card will monitor the health and status of up to seven other cards in operation. If it detects there's any kind of problem with one of those cards with the network interface or RF interface, it will automatically take over the configuration of that failed card, switch all of the RF and data port connections to itself and automatically take over operation. Spectral Net Wideband also has an automatic switching for site diversity applications. And now let's go over to our Spectral Net Wideband unit and take a look at the user interface. This is the Spectral Net Wideband interface. On your left is the navigational bar where you can set up your input stream, the RF input, your RF output, your data stream, and even check the health status of the spectral net system. On the top is your dashboard button, which is with the interface we're looking at now. And you can see from this dashboard, all of the RF information uh, that you need for the RF input spectrum and the input data stream, the IP destination, and all of the packet information. We'll also show you the center frequency that you've tuned the spectral net to and the power level of the spectrum coming in. Now on the right hand side, you can see all of the RF output, the RF output spectrum itself that's gonna be sent out of the spectral net unit, as well as the data stream, where the data is coming from and the center frequency in which the RF output is gonna be going to and the transmit power level. Note that the power level and frequencies for the RF output can be separate from the RF input. Now, if you take a closer look at the spectrum, you'll notice of the 500 megahertz that your spectral net digitizer can uh, input and transport, you can select a subset of that 500 megahertz. And here, in this example, we have two separate signals that we're looking to transport. And by able to use these two separate channels that you have available to you, you can specifically just select the spectrum that you want to transport and none of the noise floor or signals in between. This will be a tremendous help in keeping your bandwidth low on your network. Now, the next thing we also have to look at is our help button. If you need more information about SpectralNet and want the user manual, then you can go over to the help button, select that, and you'll have the entire user manual and ICD available at your fingertips. If you run into any problems with the spectral net, you can call our customer support or send them an email uh, at these uh, addresses uh, available here. The other thing that's available to you is the settings. So if you go to the settings button, you can actually select a different color scheme and go from the light that we previously had to the dark. And now with this dark color scheme, you can see we have a, a different perspective. Let's talk a little bit about the health status. Once you get uh, the spectral nets uh, monitoring its health status, you'll see you've got a green button showing everything is good. If it detects that there's a problem like it just did, it will show you that there's a fault. And by selecting on that button, you can bring up the situation and see what is going wrong with your system. And in this case, it's highlighting specifically the issue that you need to address. Once that issue has been addressed, then this, the bullet from red will turn back to, to green and the system will be back to the full operation. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to know more about SpectralNet, please visit kratosdefense.com slash spectral.